Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist and we recently sold our suburban home to move to a tiny nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dog Jack Spaniels. This week we push forwards with the buyer conversion and the finish line is nearly in sight. Plus I go on an adventure digging antique bottles from a manor house's Victorian bottle dump. And I show you how the cottage garden has bloomed into summertime. Join us as we continue. Live in the sky life. Before we get started folks, we'd just like to say thank you so much. We just hit 40,000 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. We've only been going six months. We really didn't expect to have anything like this number of subscribers in this period of time. We're very appreciative. Thank you. Just as Willie said, thank you so much. But now let's get into this week's adventures. Let's do it. <laughs> Hey Jack, has it been snowing? I don't think so, not today. Hello. That's a lovely noise. I don't like it. Is that you just arriving, is it? Uh-huh. Night shift here, yeah? <laughs> okay, yes, I have arrived. Slightly late, but it is a Sunday. Yeah, it's nearly midday. I've been out here since seven in the morning. <laughs> he was having coffee and cuddles with Jack in bed at like 10 o'clock. Jack's not allowed in the bed. Doesn't stop him. It is a Sunday, but we're using all of our days off to <laughs> carry on with work on the buyer. All right. Today, we want to finish the insulation. We hate this stuff. I wouldn't say we like it that much. <laughs> we have a love-hate relationship with it because it's obviously going to do the job and it's really good and it's got thermal insulation and sound insulation. On the face of it, it's quite easy because you just cut it to the right shape and you pop it in and that's all fine. But man, we hate this stuff. This isn't a dig at the brand or anything like that. We have no, no. problem with this brand of insulation. It's just the work we it's have to do. It's just the cutting it up and it's just a messy job. So today we're going to finish all the insulation and get this big pile of insulation boards out of the buyer. And hopefully that'll be one job ticked off the list. So let's get on. Aftermath of the insulation station. That was probably the most difficult part of insulation that I've done so far. So obviously I now deserve a drink. Yeah, I thought you were just talking to yourself there. I, was like, <laughs> I forgot what we're YouTubers No, I'm talking to all of our friends. Hi everyone out there, how are you? We're having a drink now. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. That was the most tricky part. Willie obviously managed to find another really essential job to do while I was doing it. I'll tell you what I did. We didn't have a plate, a stop plate, for this really old lock. So this is an old bacon tray that I very carefully cut a hole out of and uh, cut it out and uh, now it does that, so it's really cool. It's actually rotating now, which it wasn't before. It's cool. It's a very good job. Thank um, you. Glad you did that it. was essential. But yeah, I really want to finish the insulation today. Yeah, I wouldn't mind finishing the insulation because it just seems to be the job that never ends. The parts that we've left to the end because they were the most difficult. So now we have to do them. And it's Sunday evening and we're going to have a beer and hopefully it'll go well. All right, let's get this done. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Whee. Done with the insulation. Now there's just a bit of cleaning up to do. I wish it was that quick in real life. Well, it is Sunday evening. Our video is actually out already, so we haven't really answered any comments this week so far. No, and there's midges now. <laughs> we only noticed this today. The first day we know there's midges. It's time we got this work finished, isn't it? Before we get the plague. No, we had a really productive day. Should have been our day off, but we wanted to just get on with work. And the insulation is all done! Way. Yay! We can now get rid of the piles of insulation that we have stored in the buyer and give us a bit more space. So I'm sure there'll be another tip run coming up. Probably. So next step is just doing all the strapping. Then we put the plasterboard on. And that's it. And that's it. That's it, it's done. So cool. <laughs> onwards to next week.
Morning folks, it's 7 o'clock in the morning here at Skylife Cottage and I'm up early, I've been up since 6 because I'm going on an adventure. Sarah is still asleep, Jack is awake but he's just sprawled out on the sofa just now. But I'm just going by myself today. I'm going to a Victorian bottle dump to see if I can find some old bottles. I do a fair amount of that on my other channel, Dirty Secrets of Scotland, but this isn't a full dig today. I'm just going for a bit of a look around and see what I can find. So I'm just going to put it on Living the Sky Life as a feature for you lot to see and I hope you enjoy it. But first, I've got to get in the car and do some driving. I'm leaving the island. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, he's fully awake now. Hey, paps. What's this? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay. I'm in the car, as you can see, and the tools are packed. Let's go on an adventure. I've arrived at the manor house and it's time to get digging. I don't know what I'm going to find. It's a tough dig here, so it's probably going to take me a while, but uh, let's hope I find something anyway. I'm not going to find anything standing here chatting. Let's get digging. <laughs> As you could probably see from that time lapse, it's really tough digging. It's all stones and roots. These are dead roots. That was a tree there that's been dead for many years, so it's not doing any harm to dig these roots out. But still, they're still quite tough, even though they're all rotted. Hard going, but hopefully we'll find some cool stuff. I'm already finding bits of old glass, so it is here. I know it's here anyway because I've dug here before. But yeah, let's keep going. I've been digging down there and I've not found much, just a few fragments. And then I move a couple of feet, put a spade in, I find a bottle right away. Let's dig this out, see what that is. Ah, just a broken, but it's a good start. It means there's bottles under here, so let's keep digging here. Just had this, it's the Youngers of Alawa beer bottle. Machine made, so it's probably late 1920s, early 1930s, I guess. Common bottle, but it's a good start. Let's keep looking. Okay, I've found a few bottles now, finally. But let me talk you through some of the bottles and what it is I'm actually trying to do and find here. Firstly, these bottles here. These are probably 1920s, late 1920s, 1930s bottles. You can see here underneath the lip, there is a line and that means it's a machine made bottle. Another thing to look out for is on the base, often you'll find a circle. That is an early machine made bottle. On the other hand, this bottle here is made by hand. It's hand blown. This here, you can see, Looks a bit like drippy candle wax. That's called an applied lip. And these bottles are older. So this is probably 1900 to say 1910, 1920-ish. And then this, probably even older again. It's a bit messier, you see that? So yeah, that's an older bottle again. That's probably late Victorian. And then a blob top as well, which is a style of bottle that they made, again with an applied lip but they made it with a blob at the top to strengthen it so you could put a cork inside. Later ones have an internal screw. This one looks like it's a cork, so this is pretty old. It'd be nice to find a whole one of these, but we're not gonna find them if we keep talking. Let's get digging again. This manor house was built in the mid 1800s and so there's a huge amount of variety of bottles that you find here. You find all different ages. The deeper you go, generally speaking, means the older they get, but that, that doesn't always work either. But anyway, I'm going to dig for a bit and uh, hopefully I can find something live on camera, we'll see. As you can hear, it's incredibly hard to dig because it's all stone. Very often the spade sounds like it's hitting glass, but it's actually just hitting smooth stone. And there's a lot of flies. It's an oyster shell. Well, we are near the sea, so makes sense. We have a ceramic cup with a pattern. It's a bottle neck, and it's as drippy lippy as I call them, or applied lip, which means that it's an old bottle. Let's try and find a whole one like that before I get eaten alive by flies. Some people out there might think that these are Scottish midges, the famed Highland midge. Well, they're not. They're actually horse flies, I think. They're worse. They keep bashing into my face. It's really off putting. <laughs> Refuse collection in Britain didn't happen until the late Victorian period in, in London. But in Scotland, in particular in the Highlands, it didn't happen until like the 30s or 40s. 
all manner of stuff in here. Every old manor house has a ball dug. Lovely little fine dining teacup. Probably Victorian, I guess. Nice. Dainty little handle. A plate now as well. All coming out, old dinner set. I was actually joking, but uh, it's another bit of plate there. A big stoneware jar, all what looks like one here. Hopefully, there'll be whole. There's a lot of rocks, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's broken. Bit of movement there. Dig out underneath it. Sarah and I finished the batons yesterday for the plasterboard, so that can all go up now. Now I'm going to do some today, but I can only do the flat stuff because she's not allowing me to put the roof stuff on myself. I probably couldn't anyway. I don't know how I'd hold it up and screw it in at the same time. But yeah, so I'll do some of these boards now. You can have a watch. <laughs> about to cut the board that goes in there. Jack is waiting for this block. So I've drawn this diagram and you can see here why it's taking so long. These measurements at the top is 29 at the top and then the angle down and then it's 71 across the shoulders and at the bottom is 67. The length is 186 on that side and 166.5 on the other side. Here's the board and I'm about to cut this edge here. So at the bottom as you can see 67 much narrower than the 71 at the top. So I've got to cut a really weird angle. Some of the boards that we've got we damaged by accident when we were putting them in the shed, which was a bit of a mistake. But at least those ones we can sacrifice for cutting these weird angles. So they're not getting wasted. And you'll have you learn, you make mistakes, you know, that, that just happens. I've got all of the measurements of that board spot on. All the angles, everything, apart from the overall length, which I had measured from the bottom joist rather than the floor. Oh. Don't, don't. <laughs> Now what did I do? Start again? Waste the board? No, I'll show you what I did. Here's the board in situ, down at the bottom there. Need a skirting board anyway, so I put a little shim of plasterboard in, which is the thickness of the joist, right along, put three screws in, and then put this piece of skirting board on the bottom, and that's screwed into the joist at the bottom. So that's pulling the bottom of the plasterboard lovely in place, and it's not moving at all. The rest of it I just screwed in as normal. A bit of a mistake, but at least I didn't waste materials. If you happen to do something like that, then you know how to fix it now, I hope. Hope it helps someone anyway. I'm cutting the edge off this board because this whole place, as I've said many times probably in the videos now, is all on a strange angle. So everything that you do, you've got to sort of feel it in, put it in, and then sort of take it out and cut pieces off, etc. I just tried to put it in twice, and both times I've had to cut bits off it. So <laughs> let's hope this shave has made all the difference. May I have a drum roll? Oh. Oh. Like your glove! Excellent. We'll not, we'll not focus too closely in on this bit, huh? Yeah, we won't talk about yeah. that. We won't talk about that. All filler, no killer. <laughs> nice. Look at our poor wee dog. Waiting out the front. There you go. I'm getting to work filling some of the cracks and holes in the floorboards so that we can be ready to paint it when we get all the walls and everything done. Still feels like quite a long way off, but it will happen.
gonna go and make some dinner and we've gotta get on with editing this week's video because it's nearly ready to go. Someone's dancing because he's in a good mood. Because it's Friday. It's Friday and it's after five o'clock, so yeah. we've got... Beer. Well, we, we had. I finished mine already. I haven't. I'm a slow drinker when it comes to beer. Yeah. We've got a Sky beer. Yeah, we love this stuff. Yeah. I just drink tennis because it's cheaper. But this is nice. <laughs> this is a little treat for us having worked so hard. So yeah, it's getting on well. You're going to keep going for an hour or so. I'm going to put this panel in here. And then when that panel's in, I'm done until tomorrow till we start mm -hmm. tackling the yeah. ceiling again. We might not yeah. get all the plasterboarding done, but we'll get as much done as we can. Yeah, I've taken over because Sarah's arm is getting tired. I was talking about my, uh, called it a bar, it's not a bar. Uh, lots of antique balls to go up there. We're gonna call this Willie's Saloon. Yeah, because it kind of looks like that, like a really old pub. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the plan, anyway. Drum kit's going down here, supposed to be. I, I thought about putting it all over there, but I've decided to put it down there. A little chair with arms, a little armchair for me and my granny's old music box which I'm going to use as like a wee table. And then in this corner here, I'm going to have my little setup for making videos for you guys set up there. And my speakers and I'll have my music set up there as well. And my guitars will probably go on this wall here. Potentially it could actually go there, on this, here. It's very exciting, we don't know what we're doing yet. <laughs> I think it's whole, you know. Nice. It's a ribbed marmalade jar. Doesn't appear to be damaged. Sometimes they've got stuff inside them as well. Yep, I had a load of ash and roots in there, but that's cool. That's a whole complete jar. I don't mind that. It's not an amazing find, but it's an old stoneware jar, which is reusable and we will reuse it as well in Skyleaf Cottage. So I'll come home. Nice. This would have been a really nice bottle. It's an old canister type bottle, probably Victorian. Look at that on the bottom. Beautiful star design. I think it says A&R Thwaites and Co. Shame it's broken, but that's what I'm getting time and time again. It's just, everything's broken. It's starting to bug me a little bit. That and the flies. Let's see how long we can carry on with this. I think that's me done for the day. Quite a tough dig. Very, very rocky and not a lot coming out. Lots of broken stuff, which makes me think that it might have been dug where I was today. Down in that hole. Not entirely sure. And I probably moved around too much and exhausted myself a little bit too much. Plus I haven't been digging for about five months. So I'm probably a little bit out of shape as well, to be honest. Having said all that, I really did enjoy it. It was good fun. It was good to get back into the dirt and, uh, and the ash and see what I could find. And uh, probably the only thing I'll be bringing back today is that marmalade jar. So uh, I'll show you what I found. Some plain balls that I showed you before. And these bottles, which are sort of little blob tops, but there's nothing on them. I've got these blob shapes at the top. But yeah, not that exciting, to be honest. As I say, this is probably the only thing I'll be taking home. So it's not the best dig I've ever had in my life, to be honest. But uh, it is what it is, and that's bottle digging for you. You don't always find loads of stuff. But if you did want to see more of my digs, where I do find more things, including being here, actually, when I found quite a lot, you can go over to Dirty Secrets of Scotland and check that out. Now I'm going to fill in and head back to Sky. There we are, all filled in. In a couple of months, you won't even know I've been there. Here's a selection of bottles that I found on my previous two digs at the Highland Manor House bottle dump. And here are a few photos of the bottles on the days that I found them, still covered in dirt. Now, a little bit about each of them. Lemon & Co, a successful Dingwall aerated water company, closed in 1904, dating this beautiful blob-topped, flat-bottomed Hamilton style of bottle to the late Victorian or early Edwardian period. This is a case gin bottle, made intentionally square in section to fit into wooden crates. Salomon Abraham van Dyck's Amsterdam Company closed in 1903, so this bottle is a similar age to the previous one. This is a sealed whiskey bottle, but I couldn't find out anything online about the company. But again, it's likely to be Victorian or Edwardian due to the style of manufacture. Blankenheim and Nolet, again a case gin, but slightly later in date, around the 1910s. Surprisingly, this company still produces alcoholic beverages today. This is a sepia print Stranraer cream pot. It's from a time before refrigeration, hence using the natural cooling properties of thick stoneware to help preserve the cream. Ok, so I didn't find much on this dig, but I hope you enjoyed seeing a wee selection of my favourite balls that I dug previously at this location. 
Whilst I'm on the subject of old bottles, we brought an awful lot of old bottles here to Sky with us when we moved. These bottles are absolutely beautiful, but we don't have room for all of them, so we've decided to sell a few of them. If you want to check it out, you can go over to our Etsy store and see if you can pick up a bargain of some of the bottles that I've dug in the past. Cheers. Here is that marmalade jar that Willie found on his dig. We do use these already in our kitchen. Our utensil jars are all old marmalade jars, which is quite cool. So we do like reusing them, but I think this will make a nice vase. I'm gonna go out and collect some of the flowers that are growing in our garden. Some of them are wildflowers. Some of them have obviously been planted by the previous owners. I thought I'd bring some in and make a nice little display in our antique marmalade jar. Don't know if you can see it, but that black blob there on the nettles, that's a whole bunch of caterpillars. And there's some more there as well. I hope they're nicies and not nasties. To try and find out what they are. Whoa. Bit on it. That's what we call it. It's the larvae of some kind of insect that grows inside a kind of foamy bubble, but it looks like spit and it comes out around the same time that the cuckoos come out, so it's called cuckoo spit. So I'll not pick that one. Stand on them. This way. Come on. This way. This way. Come on. Come on. Come on. This way. Come on. Come on. Hey, Jack. Is that your little jungle? Our oh, bin is overgrown. Well, I think it's fair to say we have quite a lot of these pink flowers. I'm sure I know what they are. Geraniums? Maybe? Anyway, I think we've got enough to spare. Stampede! my butterfly. <laughs> Come on pretty thing, open your wings. <sighs> I think it's fair to say that most things in the garden are feeling pretty parched right now apart from the stuff that's right by the bin because yeah it's been so dry especially for the northwest of Scotland which is pretty much the rainiest place in the UK. We don't even really want to water too much because we have a private water supply which comes from a tank. When it's really dry that means our water levels can drop so we're trying to conserve water where we can. Unfortunately we'll just have to wait until it rains. We had these beautiful purple irises pop up just after we got back from holiday and they've gone over pretty quickly and I don't know if that's because it's been so dry but I might try and salvage a couple of them for my display. This is good boy. And my bird feeder needs refilling. All the wee birdies coming to visit. We've got plenty of peanuts. And because it's in a wire mesh cage, it's fine for them so they can't take the whole nut. They have to break it into pieces. Otherwise it'd be too big and they might choke. We have loads of beautiful foxgloves just come up here, which I love, they're gorgeous. But I'm gonna leave them here because they are A, poisonous, and B, really good for bees. So they're going to stay where they are. Done! 
put him here in the window next to Willie's uh, pride and joy, the little cherry tree that he's growing. I actually completed this last night, but uh, it was late, so I didn't film anything. I was too tired. But this is now done. This room is now completely plasterboarded, which is immense. So, uh, cheers with water. <laughs> <laughs> Now we've got to do all of this, still to be plasterboarded. This is the tricky part. This was really tricky to insulate, so there's going to be some interesting angles going on here and all of that. So I think I'm going to put another beam in there as well, which is a bit of a nightmare. So there is a, there's, there's quite a bit to do. That section with the light switch is going to be fun. Going to come off, yeah, that's going to be fun. Let's do it. Fun now. It's getting fun, I tell you. I don't know if the fun is the right word, I could use another word that begins with F. Now, because this corner in particular is really, really crooked and uh, unlevel and no sh proper angles, we're having to chamfer corners of boards. I've been doing that all the way around anyway, but now we're having to chamfer it on this side and that side. And more often than not, you have to put the board up, take it down, cut bits off it. Sometimes you do it wrong, and then you've got to use that board as a template to have a little bit more on the board, because once you've cut it off, you can't get it back. Hey, Jack Spaniels. And the whole time, Jack Spaniels is here to help, aren't you, my little pup? There you go. There you go. There you go. Good boy. Like, what were we just saying before? What's someone that? once told you that you, you don't think in straight lines. No, someone said that, and I think they thought they were having a bit of a dig. But I actually quite like that. I, I wouldn't want to really think in straight lines. I quite like having a bit of a peculiar brain. Anyway, about to find out if my peculiar <laughs> brain works. <laughs> on camera, so this probably is, not. This is never going to work on camera, ever. I'd be very surprised if it does. Oh, it's not far it's off. It's not far out, but it just needs a wee chop okay. here and there. We need to have a look at this. We'll be back. Hey, got it fitted eventually. It's not too bad. There's a little bit of a gap at the top. I'm not bothered. We'll just get the filler in there. Nobody will see any difference. And we've left. The best till last, I think. <laughs> Hello. Hello. This is what I've got to work with. <laughs> Footprints <laughs> on my ceiling. <laughs> it's gonna look like he's been dancing on my ceiling. Whoa, what? He is dancing on me. What? Oh, it is. Oh. <laughs> look. Bully's footprint. That's those Jack. are those are Jack's footprints. <laughs> Mine aren't on there. This is what it's been like the whole time. You've been in there working on cookies. I've been out here losing my mind. I stopped filming it because it was really getting to me. But uh, but we're now getting to it. We're winning. Hey, let's do this. Um, you need to twizzle it. What way is it going? Top goes to the top. Oh yeah, it's I the even top. wrote it on for you. The top of the pop on bow screen go. Is it too wide? It's too wide! It's too wide, John! I don't know why the Beatles are doing our plasterboard, though. Well, we got it up eventually. Last bit! Last bit of plasterboard! Wait, no, we've got these bits as well. Oh yeah, the same. We've got with them. <laughs> Just about to do the last bits of plasterboard when we noticed. Friends! Hopefully. Oh yeah. This is the last piece of plasterboard going in. We think. We think. We haven't double checked, but we think it is. And it's in. That's it. To screw it in. We opted not to bother plastering it. It's not our house, it's a workspace. So did we want to spend the extra money properly plastering it or get paying a plaster? Because I can't do it. Um, no, <laughs> no we didn't. So we just did it ourselves. Well, let's get this screwed in place. Let's first. do it. You may be just on the edge of the joist there. 
Lucky. I drew a line. I drew a line. Did you just sing Coldplay at me? Oh no, it's bad, isn't it? I never thought I'd see the day. I love Coldplay. <laughs> Who does not? No, I really, really don't. Yay! Well Woo! done! I said I came in for the last day of plasterboard in after I've been doing it for weeks. <laughs> I've done a bit! <laughs> well done, give me a hug. Yay! My phone's covered in plaster. <laughs> yeah, everything's covered in plaster. My aura's covered in plaster. Done. Now, all the filling, skirt and boards, and loads of other stuff. Well, at least the plasterboard is done. It looks like a room now. Admiring his handiwork. Oh. Wow. It's a room! Yep. Still a bit raggedy around the edges. Just <laughs> a bit of filler and a bit of TLC, but we will get there. And then, there's another room! Which is a bit more of a mess. <laughs> so, Chaos. next job really is to clean everything up. So we've got a nice blank canvas to fill and sand and paint. Still days and days of work, but we will get there. It's looking really, really real now. I love this wall at the back here. So the structural beams on the roof, the ones that went up in an A-frame, the middle part of the A, if you see what I mean, they're all like this, and like this, and like this, and that became the ceiling. And because they were structural, Richard told us not to take them down. So they were all left as they were. And rather than shim them all the way up and to, like try and adjust the heights of them, we just like, you know what, we're just going to leave the integrity of it. We just worked with it. We worked with it, so you get things like <laughs> this, and then like this. I think I might call it Shunky Studio. <laughs> it is a bit shunky, but I love it. <laughs> it's looking not a million miles away from a studio now, which is nice because for a long time it's felt like it was never going to be achievable, but... Yeah. Everything's achievable, folks. Just gotta live the dream, man. You just gotta believe. You gotta believe. All right, let's go. Yeah, that's enough for today. Sky life is done for the day. All right. Hey, pups. Hey, little man. You've been very patient. You've got a comb over. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching our video, we really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider leaving us a like, a comment, or subscribing to our channel if you don't already. It's free, it's cool to do, and we really appreciate it. If you do wish to support this channel further, you can do so over on Ko-fi by buying us a coffee, or Jack a treat, or just contributing towards the channel. If you want to help us out more long term, you can become one of our monthly patrons over on Patreon, which means you get loads of bonus content for helping us out each month. A big thank you to our patrons and everyone that is helping keep this channel running. If you did enjoy the feature about bottle digging and you're interested in the bottles that I've been digging over the years, you can grab a few over on Etsy as I said earlier in the video. Go over there and check it out. If you want to visit any of these pages, all the links are in our video description. Thanks again for watching our video and we will see you da da la da da no. And we're out here. We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Living the sky life. See, the thing is, right, we've got a mirror up there. So I'm looking at the mirror and looking at the screen to then see if I'm in the right position, but then I get distracted and then I start waffling all the rubbish like this. Yeah. Right. Let's right. start again. <laughs> I'm going to go make some dinner. And we've also got a video to finish. Are you filming me? I thought you were just filming selfie mode. I'm filming you. Oh. Well, that'll be in the blooper. <laughs> but if we do it this way, remember, I cut you off like this. So I have to stand with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, we have to stop. Hold on.
my arm's getting tired. And my bird feed. And my bird cedar feeder. Oh, and I also that section with the, ugh, I can't even point at it. Your lenses are, are covered in dust. You need to tell me when you're doing these things. Why? Because I look like a numpty. I always look like a numpty. It was funny. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to live in the sky life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.